Hi, I'm Kimberly, if you're new to me. And today's practice is all about the hips. We'll work to create freedom and ease in the hips, and we'll really get into the whole musculature of the low body along the way. Please have at least one blanket, have a couple of blocks or pillows and a strap, and I'll meet you reclined in constructive rest. So take your time, make your way all the way back. Knees are bent, feet are anchored to the earth. And I don't mind if you widen your feet a little bit here, allow the knees to drop a little bit or maybe all the way together. And once you get snuggled in, let's rest the hands, rest the hands on your lower abdomen. Rest the hands on your lower abdomen and begin to soften the body back to be received by the earth. Bring your attention into your breath. And let's begin to send some breath down into the bowl of the pelvis. Inhaling down into the bowl of the pelvis. And with each exhale, allow the pelvis to soften back even more, to be received by the earth. Inhaling into the bowl of the pelvis. And exhaling, melting back even more. And continuing nice and easy. Slowly begin to bring your palms to stack at your heart. And call to mind a word or phrase that brought you to the mat this morning. Unwind your arms. And if you have blocks nearby or pillows nearby, put some to the tops of your thighs, to the tops of your thighs, and begin to heel toe the inseams of the feet together, soles of the feet together, widening the knees open into Supta Baddha Konasana. Supta Baddha Konasana. So the soles of the feet are together, knees wide. And you don't have to use the blocks necessarily. You might play with the height of the blocks. You might slide them down a little more to where it's fleshy. If the blocks are really dense, you might swap them for pillows. And here, place one hand on low belly, one hand at your heart. And we'll simply bake here for five breaths, allowing the legs to be held here. The inseams of the legs to soften. I sometimes hold a lot of fight and flight response in those adductors. So taking this time to really be held here. Without the need to work or do. Or be anything other than what you are right now. And just one more breath here. And then you might keep those blocks nearby. Bring your hands to your outermost knees. And as, as if they're really dense water, very slowly lift the knees up. Feet flat on the earth. And it might feel good to hug your knees in towards the chest. Give them a good hug, a good squeeze. Let's bring your hands to your kneecaps, please. 
the fingers will face the toes. Apanasana. Inhale, knees move forward, arms lengthen. As you exhale, bend your elbows, hug your knees in, or you might widen them a little bit. Inhale, knees move forward, arms lengthen. Exhale, bend your elbows, hug your knees in. And just one more time. Good. Let's keep the right knee hugging in. Set your left foot flat on the earth. Right knee hugging in, left foot flat on the earth. Flex your right foot and ankle and inhale your right leg up to the sky a little bit or a lot of it. You might keep the knee nice and bent here. While we're here, bring your hands to the back of your right thigh. Press your thigh forward into your hands. The hands are resisting back. And allow your right low back to soften down. Let's very slowly flex and point that foot and ankle. Nice and slow. Flexing and pointing, one of my very favorite things to do for the entire chain of the leg. I used to have really bad arthritic knees and I would simply flex and point every single day and at the time, it allowed that to release. I always love starting with the feet. And the next, the next time you flex a foot, pause. As you exhale, hug the knee into the chest. You can catch the shin with both hands. Keep that foot nice and flexed. Slide the left hand down towards that ankle. And we'll use the left hand as a guide to cross the foot off the edge of your left thigh. So we're setting up for a figure four shape. But we'll keep that left foot planted on the earth for now, for now. Bringing your left palm to your left hip bone in the front where it's really, really bony. And bring your right palm to your right thigh in the front where it's really fleshy, just not on the knee in the front here. As you inhale, allow your right thigh to draw a little closer towards you or towards the wall behind you. And as you exhale, very softly press your right thigh forward towards a wall in front of you. And we'll continue just like that. So inhale, right thigh moves towards you or towards the wall behind you. Good. And as you exhale, press that thigh forward towards the wall in front of you. And as we continue in this little moving meditation here, if you feel rocking or rolling under your left hand, please press a little more firmly with your left hand and a little less firmly with your right hand. The inhale draws that thigh closer. And the exhale softly presses it away. Take a few more breaths, just like this. And I wanna give the option of staying with this. Or the next time you exhale, just an option to hug your left thigh in. You might reach between the thighs with your right hand or around that thigh with your left hand. The foot and ankle, how that left foot can be relaxed or to fire it up, you might flex the foot. You might even bring the shin a little more parallel to your mat, just an option. And breathe, be good. Trusting the deep wis wisdom of your body. So if the body is inviting you to make some subtle movements, honor that. Five more breaths. And if that left foot is lifted, on an exhale, slowly set that foot down. Reach your right leg up to the sky just for a breath. And then rebound that right knee, set that right foot down. We'll take a little pause here. A nice inhale. And a nice exhale. 
One knee at a time, hug your knees all the way to the chest. You might rock a little bit from side to side. <clears throat> and this time we'll keep the left knee hugging in. Plant your right foot slowly back down to the earth. Keep the left knee hugging in. Flex that foot and ankle. Reach that left leg to the sky a little bit or a lot of it. Feel free to soften or bend the knee. Catch the back of your left thigh with your hands or maybe even a strap here. Press the thigh forward. At the same time, hands are drawing back. And your left low back is softening towards gravity. Good. And let's slowly flex and point that left foot and ankle. Good. And then when you're ready, flex that left foot. And as you exhale, hug the left knee into the chest, catch the shin. We'll slide that right hand towards that foot or ankle and use that hand to cross that foot off the edge of your right thigh. So that left foot stays nice and flexed here. And once again, we'll bring that right palm to your right hip bone in the front. And your left palm to your mid left thigh where it's fleshy. And when you're ready, allow an inhale to draw your left thigh towards you or towards a wall behind you. And as you exhale, softly press that left thigh forward towards a wall in front of you. Inhale, thigh moves back. And exhale, press that thigh forward. And as we continue just like that, if you feel rocking or rolling under your right hip bone, you might press a little more firmly with your right hand and a little less firmly with your left hand. Good. You might stay with this action or the next time you exhale, slowly draw that left thigh in. Reaching between the thighs of your left hand, around the thigh with your right hand. You might catch the shin or flex that foot. You might bring the shin parallel to the floor, just an option. You might not. Breathe. Maybe there's a little gentle movement. And it's all connected. So as we deeply release the musculature of the low body today, notice how it affects the upper body. It's all connected. Can you melt the shoulders here a bit? Jaws relaxed, a little space in the back teeth. One more breath. When you're ready, as you exhale, set that right foot down if it's lifted. Reach your left leg up to the sky and set your left foot down. Pause. Very slowly, once again, hug your knees all the way in. Hug the knees all the way in. <clears throat> and bring your hands to your kneecaps like we did earlier. And we'll start to make circles in opposite directions with the knees. So both knees go out, apart, and back in. Out, apart, and back in. You might glue the big toes together just as an option. It creates a little point of stability. Good. And circling in the opposite direction, please. Great. And the next time the knees draw in, give them a nice hug. And then once again, we'll keep the right knee hugging in. Plant your left foot flat on the floor. Right knee hugging in, left foot flat on the floor. And begin to widen your right knee towards your right armpit. You might stay here wrapping that arm around the lower leg or the shin. 
Or you might flex the foot up towards the ceiling, finding a half happy baby pose. Now I'm catching the outer foot. If that feels wonky, you might loop a strap around the foot or you might hold on to the shin or the thigh. Now this left leg might stay exactly as it is. Or you might begin to roll to the pinky edge side of that left foot. You might support under that left thigh, coming into a half supta konasana here. That's an option. Your left arm might slide out to the left and breathe. As that right foot presses up towards the ceiling, allow the weight of that right arm to draw that foot down. A few more breaths here. Good. Now listen carefully. I want to give the option of staying right here or we're going to do another very gentle flowing movement. So listen carefully. Let's take a nice inhale here. And as you exhale, Catch your uh, right heel with your left hand. Bring your right hand just above that right knee. And we're going to begin to glide your right heel over to the left. If your left knee is wide, bring it back to center. And you might even glide your left knee a little bit to the right. So I'll take a little pause here just to clarify. So uh, the knees might be pretty much crossing here. Your right heel is crossing the center line of the body. And your left knee is moving a little bit to the left if that feels good on your body. Good. And then we'll uh, find that little flowing movement. So take a nice inhale here. And as you exhale, glide that right heel to the right. Catch the outer right foot. Open out to a half happy baby pose. Maybe that left knee widens, left hand widens. <laughs> good. And then rebound the knee, catch the heel. Glide that heel across the body to the left, your left knee a little bit to the right. <laughs> Good. And we'll go back and forth. So gliding that heel over to the right, half happy baby. And then catching the heel, gliding the heel over to the left. Good. And you're welcome to slide your right arm to the right here as well, just an option. We'll go back and forth, nice and easy, about two more times. Good. And the next time you open out that half happy baby pose, we'll take a little pause there. Good. Rebend that knee, catch the shin. Very slowly hug the knee to center, lift your left knee up. Hug that right knee to center, lift your left knee up. We'll catch that right shin with your hands and we'll slide that left leg nice and long to the top of the mat. Foot is flexing. The inner thigh is spiraling back, the thigh bone melting back and breathe. Take a full body stretch, arms and legs nice and long. You might hook your thumbs, hook your thumbs, try to pull your thumbs apart without pulling them apart. And flex, support your feet, try your yaw. Good. And then relax your feet, bring your arms down alongside the body. We'll take a little mini shavasana here. Allowing the body to receive. Mini Shavasana, if we were to stay a little bit too long, we might, we might not want to get up. Okay. And then very slowly, one knee at a time, bend your knees. And we'll hug the knees all the way into the chest once again. You might rock a little bit from side to side. Keep the left knee in, plant your right foot flat on the earth. Left knee in, right foot flat on the earth. Begin to widen your left knee out towards your left armpit. You might stay here wrapping that arm around the lower leg. 
or flex a foot up to the sky, finding your half happy baby pose here. Good. That right foot might stay exactly as it is, or just an option to begin to roll to the pinky edge side of the foot, allow that knee to widen out to a half supta konasana. Just an option. And the right arm might slide to the right. And as we breathe here, that right foot is flexing up towards the ceiling, but the weight of that left arm is drawing that foot down. Breathe. Nice inhale here. And this time as you exhale, reach across with your right hand, catch that left heel. Bring your left hand just above your left knee. And begin to glide your left heel to the right. Your right knee might come center, your right knee might drop to the left. Let's take a little pause here once again, just to make sure we're all on the same page. So that left heel is gliding across the body. The knees are pretty much stacked here or, or crossing the center. Let's take a nice inhale here. And as you exhale, glide that heel like you're tracing the horizon line. Catch the outer foot, wide into that half happy baby pose. Maybe that right knee widens, right arm might widen. And then exhale, rebend, catch the heel, glide the heel over to the right, right knee to the left. Good. And we'll move back and forth at your breath, your rhythm. I'll actually stop talking here so you can breathe and really explore. Good. We'll go back and forth one more, maybe two more times. Good. The next time you widen to half happy baby, let's stay. And this time very slowly, if that right knee is wide into the right, we'll lift that right knee to neutral. Rebend your left knee and hug that left knee in towards the chest. Give it a good hug, a good squeeze. And then we'll slide that right leg nice and long to the top of the mat. Flex all five toes back. Spiral that inner thigh back. The thigh bone is melting back. Breathe. Good. And then we'll take a full body stretch. You might hook your thumbs in the opposite direction. Kind of pull your thumbs apart without pulling them apart. Flex or pull at your feet or both. You might wiggle. Yeah. Good. And then when you are ready, nice and slow, bend your knees. Pause. Let's roll to rest on your right side in a fetal shape. You might use your upper arm as a pillow. And nice and slow, begin to press yourself up to a tabletop position. Hands and knees position on the mat. Uh, please pad your knees if you need a little extra support under your knees. Please pad your knees. Wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Let's start with a few rounds of cat-cow, waking up the spine here. With your next inhale, draw your heart forward through the gate of the shoulders. As you exhale, round the spine, press the floor away, hollow out your low belly. Again, inhale, draw your heart forward, inner thighs roll back. Exhale, round. And keep going at your rhythm, your breath. Recognizing this is your practice. If your body is asking you to move differently, honor that. If resting or staying in a child's pose feels best, honor that. Fine. Good. Take one more. When your 
good. I'll meet you in a nice long spine. Hobbler bones are broad. And last week we talked a lot about the upper body and the shoulders. So as the collarbones broaden, roll the upper arm bones open. And let's slide your right leg straight back. Slide your right leg straight back. You might stay here or breathe your right leg parallel to the floor. Hug your inner thighs together, all five toes flex down. Take an inhale, grow longer from heel to crown. As you exhale, round knee to nose. Inhale, send it back, maybe a little bit of a back bend here. Again, exhale, round knee to nose. Inhale, send it back. Two more. Exhale, round. Inhale, send it back. And last time, exhale, round. Inhale, send it straight back. Stay here for your exhale. Draw your navel in and up, grow longer. And let's cross your right leg behind your left leg. Set the toes down. Press out through that heel. And take a peek over your left shoulder at that heel. Good. I want to give the option of pivoting your left fingers to the left. Maybe your right fingers to the right. And breathe. Good. One more breath. Allow the upper body to slowly unwind first. And then inhale, breathe your right leg back. And exhale, set the knee down. Let's bring the big toes wide, uh, pardon me, big toes together, knees wide, sit back, child's pose. And let's give the wrists a little bit of love here, circling your wrists. And then stretching your arms forward, gaze between your thumbs, and inhale back to that tabletop position, hands and knees position on the mat. And collarbones are broadening, fronts of the arms are rolling open, shoulder blades slide towards one another. And this time slide that left leg back, slide that left leg back. You might stay here or breathe your left leg parallel to the floor. Hug your inner thighs together. All five toes down. Take an inhale, grow longer. As you exhale, round knee to nose. Inhale, send it back, heart forward. Exhale, round knee to nose. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, round. This time, inhale, reach it straight back. Stay as you exhale, navel draws in and up, grow longer. And then begin to cross your left leg behind your right leg, set the toes down. Press out through that heel and take a peek over your right shoulder. You might pivot your right fingers to the right, maybe your left fingers to the left. And breathe. Good. One more breath. Allow the upper body to slowly unwind first. And then inhale your left leg back. And as you exhale, set the knee down. One more time, child's pose. You might circle the wrists once again here. And you might even roll your palms open and open and close your fists a few times. Here, turn your palms down, gaze between your thumbs, inhale forward to a tabletop position. Curl your toes under, walk your hands about two inches forward. Creases of your wrists in line with the front edge of your yoga mat. Shift the shoulders just behind the wrists. I want to take a little pause here and address the upper body once again. So collarbones are broad, the upper arm bones are rolling open. Take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, hover the knees, hover the knees just a couple inches off the earth. And then slide your hips up and back, downward facing doggy, please. Option to widen your feet as wide as your sticky mat is wide. Now keep the knees soft or bent. Keep the knees 
soft or bent. So the knees are bending forward. Tops of your thigh bones are reaching up and back. If you're really bendy, draw your front ribs towards your back ribs. Roll your spine longer. And then you might walk your dog out, bending one knee at a time, just an option. Settling in to your dog. Settling in to your dog. Soften the knees. And we're going to walk the hands towards the feet and the feet towards the hands. So we'll meet in the center of your yoga mat. We'll meet in the center of your yoga mat. You might widen the feet a little bit here. Widen the feet, allow the upper body to drape down. We'll catch hold of opposite elbows. And breathe. Good. You might switch the crossing of your elbows. Snuggle in. And then unwind your arms all the way down. And what would it feel like to heel toe your feet hip bone distance? Hip bone distance apart. Soften your knees forward. Walk your hands to your shins, your thighs as you inhale, halfway rise, Ardha Uttanasana. And then climb your hands all the way up to your hips. Tap your elbows to the sky. And as you inhale, come all the way up to stand. Good. Exhale, relax your arms all the way down. And let's take a walk forward to the top of your yoga mat, finding Tadasana, mountain pose. Uh, you might have blocks nearby. You might have a blanket reachable. Blocks nearby and a blanket reachable. So finding Tadasana here, feet firmly rooted. Grow the crown of the head taller. And bring your hands to your hips once again. Bring your hands to your hips. Find those hip bones in the front. Find those hip bones in the front. From here, take an inhale, lift your heart, look up. And as you exhale, draw those frontal hip bones towards one another. Bow forward. All the way down you go. Hands to the floor or blocks. Hands to the floor or blocks. As you inhale, lengthen your spine. Keep your spine long. And slow motion, step your right leg way back. And we're going to lower that knee down, draw your sternum bone forward. So this is where that blanket can come in really handy under the knee. Or you might double up your sticky mat. Right. I want to give the option to stay here. Hands might be on blocks. Or begin to scissor your feet together isometrically. Walk your hands up to your front thigh and press yourself up. Now, I like to take a little peek at my lower leg. For me, my heel often widens to the right. So keep that heel hugging in towards your center, the lower leg right behind the knee. Good. We're going to find a little movement here. So as you inhale, draw the hips back a little bit. And as you exhale, soften in. We call it yielding to gravity. Good. Inhale, come a little bit out of the shape. Great. And as you exhale, come on in. With breath. Again, inhale, come on out. And exhale, come on in. And last time, inhale, come on out. Exhale, come on in. Option to stay here. I also want to give the option to flatten your back foot. It might feel really, really yummy. And with your next inhale, maybe the arms reach up. They don't have to. They don't have to. Now, what would it feel like to hook your thumbs? We did it lying back. So hook your thumbs, reach your fingertips up more, draw your navel in and up, allow your heart to rise, maybe your gaze lifts, breathe. Any compression in your low back, draw the hips back a little bit. Good, beautiful. Take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, slow motion, unwind the arms, plant your hands to the floor or blocks. We'll take a little bit of a counter stretch. Curl your back toes under, please. Take a nice inhale. 
And as you exhale, begin to draw the hips back. Ardha Hanonasana, half splits. We'll keep the spine nice and long here. Inner thighs rolling back, spine lengthening. And if you want a little more in this pose, you might walk your hands forward. You might even bring your arms into dog. Just an option, just an option. But keep the spine nice and long. Okay. One more breath. And then very slowly begin to re-bend your front knee. Pick up your back knee, pause. And we're going to inhale, step forward to the top of your mat. Lengthen your spine and exhale, fold. We're going to stay low. Take an inhale, lengthen your spine. We're going right to the second side. So slow motion, step your left leg way back. Lower that knee down, draw your sternum bone forward. You might stay here. Or scissor your feet together, walk your hands to your front thigh, press yourself up. Good, please, please, please pad your back knees if you need to. We'll find a little movement here. So as you inhale, press a little bit out. And exhale, come on in. Again, inhale, press a little bit out. And exhale, come on in. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale. Exhale. You might stay here. You might flatten that foot. As an option, inhale, breathe your arms up. You might hook your thumbs in the opposite direction. And as your fingers reach up, heart lifts up, navel drawing in and up. Breathe. Once again, if it feels too much, press a little bit into that front foot. Come a little out of the shape. Beautiful. So nice. Take an inhale when you're ready. Slow motion, exhale, lower your hands all the way down to the floor or blocks. Curl your back toes under, please. Take a nice inhale. And as you exhale, begin to draw the hips back. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Good. Inner thighs rolling back. Spine is lengthening. And if you want more, you walk your hands forward. Totally fine. And breathe. Good. Very slowly begin to re-bend your front knee. Pick up your back knee, pause. As you inhale, step forward to the top of your yoga mat, lengthening your spine. And exhale, fold. On an inhale, halfway rise once again. Hands to shins or your thighs. And then bring your hands to your hips once again. Hug your elbows to the sky. Nice long spine. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. And exhale, relax your arms all the way down. Good. Let's take a quarter turn open on our yoga mat. So feet about three feet apart. Feet about three feet apart. Bring your hands to your hips. The feet are nice and parallel here. Bring your hands to your hips. Roll your frontal uh, hip bones towards one another. Take a nice inhale. And as you exhale, begin to bow forward. Hands all the way down to the earth or blocks, please. As you inhale, lengthen your spine. Listen carefully. Wrists right under your shoulders. You might even come high into your fingertips if you have really short arms like I do. And begin to bend into your right knee. Begin to bend into your right knee. Keep the knee forward. Keep that outer left foot rooted. If you need to widen your stance, you do. Totally fine. So as you bend into that right knee, draw the hips back more. Draw the hips back more so we're not putting too much weight into that knee. And bring your attention to that left leg, that outer foot rooted. And what would it feel like to draw your left inner thigh to your left outer thigh? Your left inner thigh to your left outer thigh. Good. Breathe. One more breath. There you go. Good. And then slowly through center, grow your spine a little longer. Inhale. And as you exhale, other side. So bend into your left knee. So bend into your left knee, that outer right foot is rooted. 
And once again, think about really reaching your hips back. Reach your hips back. Good. Anchor that outer right foot down and draw your right inner thigh towards the outer thigh. Draw the inner thigh towards the outer thigh. Good. And then inhale to center. Let's take a fold here. So exhale, fold in. You might walk your hands back into the earth or the crown of the head is touching the floor. You might even walk the heels of the hands back so they line up with the heels of the feet, just an option. Elbows are tacking back, if that's you. And shoulder blades shrugging up and out of the back. And there's freedom in the head and the neck here. The head might rest to the earth. Breathe. A couple more breaths. And then slowly walk your hands right under your shoulders. We have a little bit of a different transition today. So listen carefully. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, begin to bend into your front knee. Slow motion, pivot everything forward towards the top of your yoga mat. Wonders lunge. Take a pause here. Back heel lifts. Good. Step back to plank pose, top of a push-up. Knees up or knees down. You choose. Knees up or knees down. Good. Take a nice inhale here. Press the floor away. In one piece, lower all the way to your belly, please. All the way down you go. Elbows back. And once you touch down, stack your hands under your forehead like a little pillow. Stack your hands under your forehead. Let's grow the legs a little bit longer. So curl one set of toes under. Pick up that knee. Press out through that heel. Lower the knee, flatten the foot. And then other side, curl the other toes under. Pick up that knee, press out to that heel. Lower the knee, flatten the foot. You might play with that one more time or you might shift or shimmy the hips a little bit from side to side, just an option. Press your toenails down. Hug your toenails up towards your hips. And then we'll come on to our forearms for Sphinx Pose. <laughs> Good. Great. Elbows under your shoulders. If this feels a little bit too much, feel free to walk it forward. Totally fine. Otherwise, elbows right under your shoulders. Broaden your collarbones. Roll the fronts of the arms open. Hug your shoulder blades together. And as your hands drag back isometrically, isometrically or energetically, the back of the heart is lengthening forward. Breathe. The pubic bone is anchored. Legs are heavy to the earth. You might gaze off the bridge of your nose. Good. And I'm going to give you the option of a quadricep stretch here. So if you want to stay here, be my guest. Otherwise, bring your right forearm parallel to the front edge of your yoga mat. I'm actually going to slide my forearm a little bit forward so it's a little bit gentler. See what it feels like to bend your left knee. And then see what it feels like to reach around, catch the outer edge of the foot where the toes and the foot meet. Good. Loop that shoulder up, back and onto your back. As you inhale, kick the foot into the hand. Stay here. Kick the foot into the hand. As you exhale here, turn your navel forward forward and then see what it feels like to draw that heel in towards the buttocks if it comes pretty close or taps the buttocks you might do the little hand flip where we catch the toes and spin the fingers forward so they're wrapping over the toes just an option not a challenge just an option not a challenge and then press your right forearm down and forward and breathe As we breathe here, imagine there was an energe energetic line from your left hip bone to your left kneecap and lengthen that line longer towards the wall behind you. Good. And take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, slowly release. Let's come back to Sphinx Pose. Come back to Sphinx Pose. Draw your heart forward. 
Now let's take a little rest between sides. So lower down, stack your head on your hands. Wag the hips a bit here. Good. And then we'll come back into that sphinx shape. So take your time, take your time. Broaden your collarbones, draw the heart forward. Root your pubic bone down, legs heavy. Good. So you might stay here or bring your left forearm parallel. Begin to bend your right knee, see how that feels. Good. Reach your right arm forward, bring it around, catch the outer foot. Loop that shoulder up, back and onto your back. As you inhale, kick the foot into the hand. You might even stay right here. As you exhale, draw your navel forward and draw that heel in towards the buttocks. If you have the hand flip, be my guest. I'm not going to do that. Pubic bone rooting down here and imagine a nice beautiful line of energy from your right hip bone to your right kneecap and your right kneecap is lengthening back er. Good. Press your left forearm down and forward. Breathe. Take a nice inhale. As you exhale, release the foot. Come back to Sphinx Pose just for a breath. Take an inhale, draw your heart forward. And as you exhale, lower forward and all the way down, rest either on your hands or a cheek. You might wag your hips or you might bend your knees and wag your shins from side to side. Very, very, very nice. And then plant your feet down. Plant your hands alongside your chest or your shoulders, elbows to the sky. Slow motion, inhale to tabletop, please. Bring your big toes together, knees wide. If you want to fire up a little more, you might even widen your knees a little bit wider. You might separate your big toes. And reach your hips back to child's pose or a little variation here. Breathe. Good. And tailbone heavy. Slide the hands back towards your shoulders. Very, very slowly exhale, roll yourself up, please. Good. Now here, here it comes. Here's our, our pose of the day, pigeon pose. So uh, we'll find one blanket. We'll find one blanket. Find one blanket uh, and you'll fold, take it as it usually comes off the mat and you'll roll it. I'm actually using the round side and rolling it in. So it's a pretty thick, a pretty thick blanket roll. And have it, have it to the side of the mat. We'll place it uh, lengthwise. So have it to the side of the mat. And we'll come into a tabletop position like we did earlier. Come into a tabletop position. Good. And begin to slide your right knee outside your right wrist. Slide your right knee outside your right wrist to the corner of your yoga mat and the heel is really at the center of the body. Curl your back toes under. Curl your back toes under. Pick up that knee, press out to that heel and lower the knee down. Now we're going to find this blanket and we're going to snuggle this blanket so it really rests at the top of that left thigh. The top of that left thigh and your right buttocks is sitting on it. Does that make sense? So that blanket is at the very top of your left thigh and your right buttocks is sitting on it. So if you're leaning into one hip or the other, uh, widen your right knee a little wider, draw the right heel in towards the center. Good, I'm gonna take a peek back at my back leg and make sure it's straight back. Good. I like this because it squares the hips, it often takes some pressure out of the knees if this feels terrible for you and your body, uh, now might be a good time to make your way into thread the eye of the needle once again. 
either sitting or lying back. Good. So from here, come high into your fingertips, finger pads. Keep the back toes curled under for now. What would it feel like to scissor your knees together? You might walk your hands back, take an inhale, lift your heart, look up. You might stay here. Or as you exhale, slow motion, begin to walk it forward. You might lower down to your forearms or blocks. You might even scooch that back knee back a little bit, flatten the foot. And let's bake here about a minute hold today. About a minute hold. And if you have questions or something doesn't feel right, please, please raise a hand. I'll, I'll come and take a peek. Good. Great. We've gotten a, a pretty generous amount into the hips today. So if you're not noticing any sensation and you would like a little more without overdoing, you might bring your front shin a little more parallel to the top edge of your yoga mat. That right foot is flexing or pointing. And then roll that left outer hip forward, torso forward, and walk yourself forward. Ooh, that's a little bit too much for me. Breathe. Nice long exhales. And then very, very slowly begin to walk it up. You might move that blanket off to the left. And then very slowly step back to downward facing dog, please. Downward facing dog. Might feel really nice. If it doesn't, take a child's pose. Walk it out. And I'll meet you in child's pose. I'll meet you in child's pose. probably take the second side. So when you're ready, inhale forward to that tabletop position. And once again, do have that blanket reachable. You might scooch it to the right side so it's a little bit easier to, to take hold of. Uh, from here, slide your left knee outside your left wrist. Slide your left knee outside your left wrist. Heel in towards the center. And curl your back toes under. Pick up that knee, press out with the heel, lower the knee down, and find that blanket and slide it in to the top of that right thigh so it supports you, actually deepens the thigh, and your right buttocks is resting on it. Good, great. And take time here to be comfy. Make sure it's not, uh, the blanket is nice and neutral. If you need to re-roll it, you do. When you're ready, curl those back toes under. Come high into your fingertips, finger pads. Begin to scissor your knees together. Walk your hands back. Take an inhale, lift your heart, look up. You might stay here in this back bend. Or as you exhale, begin to walk it forward. Maybe to your forearms. Maybe you scooch that back knee back. Err, and flatten that foot. Err. <laughs> and breathe. Nice long exhales. Good, very nice. Once again, if this doesn't serve you, we come in to thread the eye of the needle. For more sensation, we bring that left shin more parallel to the top edge of your yoga mat. Roll that right hip forward, torso forward, and walk it forward. Just an option. Hmm. 
We've got five more breaths. Very slowly begin to walk it up. That blanket's in the way, move it out of the way. And I want to give you the opportunity to come back into dog, another few breaths as a little bit of a counter stretch. A little bit of a counter stretch. And then lower the shins down, cross your ankles and reach the hips back, stretch your legs forward into Dandasana. Or make your way into Dandasana. Good, great. You might have your strap reachable. You might have your strap reachable. You might sit on a blanket or you might even bend your knees. If you're using the strap, let's go ahead and loop the strap around the padding of the toes, metatarsals. Sit up nice and tall. Heels might be sliding forward or the knees bent, totally fine. Root the backs of your thigh bones down. Take an inhale, lift your heart, look up. And as you exhale, hinge forward, Paschimottanasana. You might walk your hands forward. You might catch your feet. And breathe and rest. Your next inhale, gaze forward. Stay for an exhale. And then inhale, come all the way up. Move your strap to the side. Bend your knees, scoot yourself forward. And take your time, make your way all the way onto your back, please. Make your way all the way onto your back. There's no one way to do anything. And once you arrive, come back to that constructive rest, just like we started. Be absolutely comfortable here. And let's bring the feet as wide as your sticky mat is wide. Knees right over the ankles. And slide the arms either out to the sides, or you might even bend your elbows, find goalpost arms. And take some windshield wipers. Take a nice inhale here. As you exhale, both knees to the right. And inhale, center. And exhale, knees to the left. And inhale, center. This time, exhale to the right. Option to stay right here. Option to stay right here. For a little more sensation, flex your right foot and ankle. And you might cross that foot on top of your left thigh. That's an option here. Keep wrapping your left hip, uh, pardon me, left ribs back. You might reach your left arm back. You might reach your right arm back. You might catch hold of opposite elbows. Oh, and lengthen your elbow joints back. Just an option here. Breathe. That foot is on top, very slowly release it. On an inhale, knees back to center, take a little pause there. Plant your feet, you might re-goalpost your arms. And lengthen your tailbone just a little bit longer here. And take an inhale. And then second side, exhale, knees to the left, option to stay. 
You might flex your left foot and ankle, stack that foot on top of your right thigh. Right ribs rolling back. And then maybe that right arm reaches back. And maybe the left arm. And just an option to catch hold of opposite elbows and lengthen your elbow joints back and breathe. If that left foot is on top, very slowly release it. On an inhale, let the knees back up to center. Unwind your arms. Hug your knees all the way into the chest. Happy baby pose, please. Happy baby pose. Okay. You might rock a little bit from side to side. Take five more breaths here. Five more breaths here. And if there is any Final movement your body is craving. Honor that. When you're ready, beginning to find your way into a very well deserved Shavasana. A very well deserved Shavasana. And take your time. Any stuckness? or tenderness in the low back, you might support behind your knees. You might cover yourself with a blanket or even place a folded blanket at the tops of your thigh bones. And as you arrive back, Maybe the palms roll open, a comfortable distance away from the body. You might even walk the shoulder blades just a little bit closer towards one another, as if they were doors holding your heart. And if you have any leftover tension, tightness, Anything at all. Take a nice inhale, draw it up. And out the mouth, let it go. <sighs> you might do that one or two more times. passage from the Book of Awakening entitled Freeing Ourselves. It starts with a quote by Sharon Green. <laughs> she says, it's hard to tell the truth, but once told, it's hard to keep it back. Author goes on to write, whatever truth we feel compelled to withhold, no matter how thinkable it is to imagine ourselves telling it, not to is a way of spiritually holding our breath. You can only do it for so long. Of course, the longer we keep our truth hidden, the more difficult it, the more difficult it is to give it voice, or so it seems. Because while the pressure is building, we are running out of air. But we are never more than a heartbeat from freeing ourselves of that awful isolation never more than a gulp and a cough from falling back into the open. All the while, the power of being hidden keeps us from the vitality of living. 
And so the healing value of telling the truth is how, to, is how it returns us to the pulse of what is sacred. Just as important as the respect and trust gained for telling the truth is the release of that terrible pressure that keeps us hidden and isolated. This is the embodied gift of truth, which like breathing, keeps us alive. Bringing your attention back to breath. And calling to mind that word or phrase that brought you to the mat this morning. Maybe it's changed. Bring your palms to rest sweetly at your heart. And we'll sing the sound of Om one time softly together. First a breath, take a nice inhale. And out the mouth, let it go. <sighs> inhale. And together we say, Namaste. Namaste.